guys, it's Beverly. Sorry about the glare on my glasses. I'm still hanging in there with them. <laughs> These are the bifocals. Now, I had a request, and I'll mention her name in the next part of the video because I didn't write it down. I had a request to do the Biffer Duster Wig. And this is from Gherkins, you know, like the pickle Gherkins, Gherkins Bucket, Biffer Duster Wig by Kristen L. and Gherkins, Gherkins Bucket from 2007, 2007. And her pattern is copyrighted, so I sent her a message through Facebook to get her permission to do this tutorial and Kristen Kirsten 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 hi Kirsten uh, gave permission for me to do a video and since it's copyrighted I wanted her permission and so now I have the create creators okay so I'm gonna make a tutorial now, here is three, six of these. I'm using the Pipsqueak Bernat Pipsqueak yarn. And the reason I use that, as you can see, there isn't any fuzzies. Nope, there's no fuzzies coming off of this. And I ordered some more of this because I only have like one skein or a partial skein of this. It still is available from Joann's. So I ordered some more. And then I used the cotton, any kind of cotton, uh, to make the holder or the center. And I'm going to be showing you how to do that. So this one has two colors. I got some pink in there. And then there's, this is, I think it's like baby pink. And then this is some kind of sea color. The blue and the green. Love the blue and the green. So, that's what this video is going to be. It's a tutorial. And I'll see you at my kitchen table. <laughs> okay, guys, here we are. We're going to do our tutorial for the Biffer Duster Wig from Gherkin's bucket. Kirsten has given her permission. Now, the person that requested this tutorial is Susan Pfeiffer. I'm not sure how to say her name, but Susan or Sue, I'm so thankful that you did, and I'm thankful that I contacted Kirsten, and now we're going to do a tutorial. Now, this is a tutorial that I, uh, the way I do this pattern. So, this is what I work off of, and I take it from there. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I would want you to do is print this pattern. So, if you haven't done so, please do. And if you go to Google and you type in Biffer Duster Wig and Gherkin's Bucket, it will take you to a link on Ravelry. I also will be putting links in this video because I would like you to print out the pattern first. You'll have it in hand. You'll be referring to what I'm referring to and you can make notes on it also. Now the first thing you're going to notice is I use an eye hook. She recommends an H. That's fine. I like to use an eye. Uh, also, it says that she uses a quarter ounce of worsted weight kitchen cotton, and she uses lily sugar and cream, which is absolutely fine, and a uh, one and a quarter ounce of machine washable novelty yarn. And she's guessing, depending on what kind you use, that you'll use 35 yards. So I have started using this pipsqueak. And this is what I, I used from the very beginning because I must have had some on hand. And again, I like the pipsqueak because when you, you know, I'm not pulling it, 
but when I rub on it, you know, like you would be dusting, no little flakes fa fall off. And I, as I mentioned previously, I just bought some from Joann's. And this color here that I have is called Candy Girl. And the green, I think, one of the colors was called Funny Bunny. But I don't really go so much by the colors. Now this one here, of course, happens to match it. And if I have some yarn that matches, you know, every, it's cool. And you'll notice that one end of this is closed off and then the other end is where you put in the little tongs I'm going to call them tongs or prongs right in there is where you would stick the prong of the handle and then over here you would kind of just we work it out and then I always tell everyone to get your favorite drink sit down and relax and weave it through because there is a tube and you're going to see it there's two tubes for your tongs or prongs or whatever you're calling it of the Swiffer and when we get done later when I pause the video I'll get a handle and show you how it goes in okay so uh, with the cotton we do a chain of 21. So I'm going to pause the video. I'm just using some leftover cotton here. I don't know if there's enough of this to finish. Um, so I, I brought a cone, a leftover cone of some white. So I'm going to go ahead and chain 21. Okay, I have my chain of 21 and it says the single crochet in the second chain from the hook and a single crochet in each chain across you will have uh, 20 single crochets and then we're going to chain two and turn okay so my second chain one two i'm going to do a single crochet i probably will do this a little more comfortable Whoop. yeah let me adjust things okay one two so I'm gonna go right in here and single crochet so you insert your hook pull through pull through two insert your hook pull through pull through two so I'll meet you back when we have 20 single crochets okay I have 20 single crochets now it says to create round chain two counts as your first stitch then it says to double crochet in the front loop of the next four single crochets. Okay, through the front loop is what this TFL stands for. Through the front loop. So we're going to double crochet through the front loop of the next four single crochets. Okay, and if you wanted to, you could just write front loop here if you want. And then we're going to do 10 half double crochets in the front loop of the next 10 single crochets. Okay, so I'm going to chain two. Okay. And this chain two counts as a double crochet. I'm going to find the front loop and I'm going to do four double crochets. Okay, so there's your first one. 
So there's one, and again, I gotta find the front loop. Two, insert the hook in the front loop, yarn over, insert the hook in the front loop, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull two through two. So we've got three, yarn over, insert your hook, front loop only, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two. And so technically we have five double crochets. Then it says to do a half double crochet through the front loop in the next 10 single crochets. Okay, so we're gonna yarn over, we're gonna find that front loop, we're gonna pull through, and we're gonna pull through all three. That's a half double. Yarn over, insert it in the front loop only, pull up a loop, pull through all three. And that's two. Yarn over, insert in the front loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through all three. And you want to do that ten times. I'll meet you back. Okay, I completed my 10 half double crochets. Now it says to double crochet through the front loop in the last five single crochets and to chain two and turn. Okay, so yarn over and we're going to do a double crochet in the front or through the front loop of the next five stitches. So there's one. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two. Yarn over, insert your hook through the front loop. Oh, I got two loops. Pull up a loop, pull through two, Pull through two, yarn over, insert it through the first loop or the front loop, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and this last little one is hanging out right there. So we yarn over, insert our hook in that front loop. Pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, chain two, one, two, and turn your work. And then it says to repeat from the double crochet um, through the front loop of the next four on the back side. So you repeat from here to here. Okay, working in remaining loops from the row of single crochets you just worked in two, or the back loop of every stitch. Join with a slip stitch of the round. Join with a slip, sh slip stitch to first stitch of the round. Now this through both loops is for the close round, okay? So, what I read was, we're going to break it down. We're going to double crochet in the front loop of the next four single crochets. So, see these, this row right here? I don't know if I can show you, but there it is right there. Okay, so we already did our chain two. So, now we want to come down here and grab this. I already yarned over. So this is the front loop, in this case, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, and I'm going to move this around, okay, 
yarn over and right see there's that loop right there so we've got to go right over here next door pull up a loop pull through two pull through two and I'm gonna get some more yarn okay yarn over and right here's our next loop so we're gonna pull it stick that through there pull up a loop pull through two and pull through two and see if you take a look at what you're doing you're actually see how my fingers in there you're actually making the um, tunnel <laughs> for lack of a better word that the prong or um, part of the handle goes in. Okay, yarn over, go through that loop, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two. Now we're only supposed to have four here. So see if I went crazy, I didn't, I have four. Now the pattern says to do the half double crochets through the front loop in the next 10, okay? So we're gonna yarn over, and there's our loop right there next door. So we're gonna insert our hook. Pull up a loop, pull through all three. Yarn over, insert our hook. Just grab one loop, pull up a loop, go through all three. Yarn over. And see right next door is that next loop all by itself pull up a loop pull through all three and see these are the loops that I'm going to be using for the rest of the row so I'm going to pause the video and finish my 10 half double crochets okay let's take a look at what we have okay now we have our chain Two, which represents the first stitch then we have four doubles and we have ten half doubles and this is making the channel for the prong of the handle this part down here on the bottom I hope that it wasn't out of focus so that's the prong for the handle and we're going to be closing this top up and this part down here our first row of single crochets is where we're going to attach the pip squeak yarn okay because up here we're going to make our second channel our second channel goes up here sorry it's focusing in and out okay so at this point we need to do five double crochets so i have one two three four and five so let's do our five double crochets so we're going to yarn over go right in that stitch and do our five okay yarn over insert your hook Yarn over, pull through two, okay, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, and then over here is my last little loop so i'm going to yarn over and i'm going to turn this whichever way i need to to get that last loop pull up a loop pull through two and pull through 
two. Then the directions say, join with the slip stitch, what my hand was in the way, join with slip stitch to first stitch of the round. Okay, so this was a whole entire round, and we're going to do the close round next, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to pull up this where we first started, okay, and you can locate it. So there was your first four double crochets, and then here was your first chain two. So I'm going to go right up here in our chain two and slip stitch to join okay so you could have put a stitch marker in there that would have pulled it up apart a little but i'm going to kind of come in sideways and then i'm going to pull it in the right right way because we want to do back to front but i want to break my loop a little bit bigger here okay there we go, and I'm going to take it out, okay? So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to slip stitch into the top of that chain two. I hope I got it in the right spot. And then slip stitch to join, okay? Now, for round, to close the round, we're going to do a chain one which does not count as the first stitch we are going to single crochet through both loops of of both sides from the previous round all the way across this will create a pocket and leave a ridge to attach the novelty yarn later okay so what we're going to do is we're going to chain one first okay and then we're going to turn our work and we're going to take a look at it okay and what we have to do is we have to single crochet through these both loops on both sides okay so i'm going to position to this so i can see it a little bit better and I'm going to come over here, and it looks like that this is my first little stitch here, and my first little stitch over here. So I'm going to go through here. I got both loops, and I'm going to look back over here, and I have both loops. So I'm going to go right through there. I'm going to pull through and single crochet okay now I'm going to go through these two loops and these two loops and single crochet there's the next two loops and the next two loops Okay, and that's what you do all the way across a single crochet and she says that it's creating a pocket and that's true right through there you would stick the prong of the handle okay so it's making a pocket, using Kirsten's words. Okay, so there's the two. Okay. There we, and you can see the little Vs, those are the stitches. And you can see that your pocket is staying open. Okay, I'm just going to continue single cro crocheting across, and then I'll meet you back when we get done. Okay, I'm getting near the end, and you can see how this is kind of dropped down, so I need to pull it up a little. 
so that I can get my V stitch and my V's or you know my single crochets so I can single crochet and then I'm going to take a look again and there's another little V right there and then there should be one on the back side so I'm just gonna go ahead and use it and then now I have finished creating the pocket and so we created a pocket and we're leaving a ridge to attach the novelty yarn later and we're going to turn it and we should have 20 single crochets now it says to repeat the last two paragraph once more and fasten off and weave in the ends so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up here so I'm going to chain two and turn And sometimes I go ahead and I do a little slip stitch into this right here. See, here's a, the opening. Now, right now, there's an opening on both ends. But when we attach the novelty yarn, there won't be. So I'm just going to do one more little slip stitch so that I'm down here at the very end. And if you're already at the very end, then you're good. Okay, so chain two, turn your work, okay, and we're going to repeat this round here. So the chain two we just did counts as a stitch. We're going to double crochet in the front loop of the next four singles. Then we're going to do our ten, and then we're going to double crochet in the last five, okay? So this is our first one. And see right here is our pocket. And then there's the, um, what's she calling it? The ridge to attach the novelty yarn. And then this section is the ridge that's between the two pockets. Okay, so we yarn over and we locate the front loop. Okay pull this a little closer so I can see it yarn over and double crochet so I've got to do three more doubles and then I'll be going into my ten half doubles so you can either rewind the video or read from your pattern but I'm going to meet you back at the end of this round so remember four doubles ten half doubles and five doubles Okay, so I finished this round up to here, okay, so I did um, four doubles, ten half doubles, five doubles. Now it says to chain two, one, and two, turn your work. And then in these little loops that are left, we're going to repeat what we just did. So we're going to do four doubles, ten half doubles, and five doubles in these, these little loops right here. These little tiny, hopefully you can see those loops right there. Okay, so let's do that again. Okay, I went all the way across. So now I need to join in the chain two so see there's the chain two space so i'm going to take and i already opened up the hole and i'm gonna slip stitch to join to the top of the chain two now this says to chain one so i'm gonna chain one and turn and then we're going to do the same thing we did before as we're going to locate our loops. So we're going to go through both loops and locate this both loops on this side. 
and go through. So you have the two V's and do a single crochet all the way at top. And so now we have our second pocket and we're going to create our second ridge. And then I'm going to show you how I do attach the handle. And then I'm going to show you how I put on the novelty yarn. Okay, so single crochet all the way across. I'll meet you back. Okay, I made it all the way across. And usually what I do is I try to do a slip stitch into this little nub thing. <laughs> And we'll just go like that. Maybe I can just pull it through. Like so. And then I cut my yarn, which I don't have scissors, so I'm going to pause and get that and get a handle. Okay, I got some scissors. So I'm going to snip this off a little bit. Then fasten this off like so and there I have my pockets and ridges for the novelty yarn okay so the next thing I do is I sew in these strings so we can go ahead and do that I'll meet you back okay so what I did was I sewed in my ends or tails and I put them I hid them around the ridge because I didn't want to interfere with the pockets on, both, on either side on, in our case we had um, two ends on one side okay so you take a look at it and you know that your prongs go inside here so I tell everybody that gets one of these that you just take it's slow see how I got that first edge in there so you have to get the second one in there right and you can see it's going through the pocket and you take your time if you ram it too fast <laughs> through the pocket you'll come up through here which wouldn't be the end of the world but that's not the purpose of it okay and you can take this little prong plastic thing and push it up and as you can see you can you can even buy no you can't bypass it because it's kind of in the way so we need to prong it up and see this is a generic handle see what I mean about getting it so you just take your time you can go back and forth and push it through and there you go and then of course you can lift this up the center piece here and put it up on on top of this but you get the idea and the ye yellow handle one I think has the larger one but see I'm going to be taking this off now so I'm not going to pressure myself to put this little plastic piece up on the work now what I recommend with these is once you get it on here and after it's finished, you leave it on your handle. You take and you put some soapy water in your kitchen sink or bathroom sink, whatever sink, and you leave it on here. And you just put it in the water, swish it around back and forth, and rinse it out, and then let it dry. And it's all ready for the next dusting so you don't have to keep taking it off and putting it on it but that's a personal choice now I'm gonna pull this off and we're going to put on the novelty yarn okay so I'm gonna flip this over and let's take a look I guess I have to unstaple it here it says attach the the novelty yarn to one loop of an edge stitch on 
the long side with a slip stitch. Chain 10 loosely and slip stitch into the loop of the next stitch. So I'm going to show you how I do that. Okay, so I have my novelty yarn. Get this cotton yarn out of the way. And here's my novelty yarn. And in this case, I take it, I think, from the outside. No, nope, I took it from the inside. So see, I got it to come from the inside. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do a slip knot here with my pip squeak. Okay. And I'm gonna put it on my hook. And you can decide what end or side you wanna put it on, doesn't matter. And I'm gonna take and find the first single crochet. Bring the yarn over and do a slip stitch, okay? Now later on I'm going to show you how I put this tail in. Now I'm going to loosely chain 10. Okay, so I'm going to loosely chain 10. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch in the next one. Now, if I take this piece with me, it's not going to go, it's just going to end up falling out because slip stitch. Well, maybe it will stay good because I thought I'd done it before and it didn't. So if it stays good, go ahead and slip stitch around it. Okay, chain 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9 and 10 and then I'm going to go right next door and slip stitch into the next single crochet. Then I'm going to chain 10 again. And slip stitch into the next single crochet and that's how I do it so go right ahead down this side and I'll meet you down here okay so I finished to the end here and I have one row on this side of loops. Now, Kirsten has you uh, chain two and turn your work and go back, around, back this side. Now, what I do is I continue around the top here and then I do it a turn and come back so there's either way you want to you can chain two turn this back and go right back through or you can go straight across like I'm going to do and we're going to go down here then we're going to turn our work and we're going to go back so I'm going to go straight across so I'm going to go right ahead and chain 
10. Sorry if I'm out of the camera range. One. Okay. And then I just look for a place where I can have two loops. Now the way Kirsten does hers, then you could stick the handle in on either end, but on mine you just would do it from this end, okay? So either way. So I'm going to do 10 again. And then I'm going to go right through here and do my slip stitch. Whoop. So I just showed you what happens when you miss it. So you just pull it up again and go for it again. <laughs> okay. And so I'm going to be going across here and then down here. And then I'll be coming back. Okay, I made it to the other side. Now, um, what I do is I go ahead and I chain my next 10. I turn my work and what I do is I spread this circle open and I go back in the same hole and do a slip stitch. Okay, and so then I spread this next one apart and I just go right into where I was before and I make my other and so then now I have two rows so I'm going to keep going all the way around and I'll meet you back when I'm here. And I wanted to show you this type of handle. Remember this handle has this little blue thing which you could pull it up and that would secure it. This one has, I think, same amount of tongs, length in the tongs, but it doesn't have that extra little thing, obstacle that you have to do. Okay, so I'm going to meet you back when I'm all the way back around. Or when you have two rows on each side. Okay, I made it all the way around. And you should have two rows of loops on both sides. So I'm over here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and cut the yarn. And pull it through. To finish it off and then what I do with this tail is I take and just pull it through and that seems to work fine so I just kind of work it through and then it just becomes part of the other loops. And so I'm going to go up here and pull it through. 
And of course, you could cut it off, you know, ever where you want. But that's how I do it. I just kind of pull it, pull it through. Okay, so there is our Biffer Duster wig. So I hope you guys had fun making this. And like I said, I'm going to link uh, Kirsten's um, Ravelry page below. And you can also check out her Etsy shop. Um, it says you can also purchase these pre-made through her Etsy shop. For those of you who, that are less crochet inclined. So there is her website. And I hope you guys like this. If you like this um, tutorial, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And um, print out your pattern. Catch you guys later. Love you. Bye.